Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a lovely floral wreath just using a single flower. We're going to use the flowering dogwood tree because it creates these beautiful four petaled flowers that I think are gonna look really cool. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so to start a wreath, we either use a compass or you could draw around something round. I've just realized my palette would be absolutely brilliant. Um, but I will use the compass just for sort of, so I can get a bit more control with the, the size of the circle that I want to do. So spike that in the middle and a nice lightweight circle. And we are going to do this lovely wreath, but we're just going to use a single flower. Now, if you haven't already seen a dogwood flowering uh, tree, um, I highly recommend you go online and Google it um, or search for it and you will be amazed. It's such a cool flowering plant. Like we're all really keen on blossom, um, but this is uh, yeah, a completely different type of flower and um, it's a really interesting shape. So what I'm going to do, even though in my botanical style of painting I don't draw out the flower, what I am going to do for you is just give you a rough idea of what this flower looks like. So you have your stalk and your centre, which is how we always start flowers, but it has four petals and the petals sort of come out a bit like light bulbs, but then they sort of fold down like that. So you're left with kind of sort of elephant ears or <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but you sort of end up with something that looks a little bit like that and they have these lovely sort of uh, lines along the petals. So yeah, go and have a look at one of these before we get started. Just leave that up there. Right, so I'm going to use um, my Maya watercolours today just because what I like about the size of this palette is I can fit it all on camera with our new lens that is a little bit more close up for you guys. And I'm just getting a lovely sort of permanent rose and I want to make it a little bit more blush coloured. So mixing that in with some red and a little bit of orange. And we'll just get a bit more pink in the mix there. And um, floral wreaths are often an opportunity to paint a sort of a number of flowers, um, but I have really enjoyed in the past painting a wreath using a single plant, and there's just something really striking and cool about it. Now, what we need to be careful of is making sure we have enough room for our sort of large petaled flowers and then our sort of stalks and branches will, will come in later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by marking out, just with some circles, where our flowers, our sort of big focal flowers are going to be. So I'm um, sort of starting with the open face flowers. So remember they've got these large petals that are gonna be coming round the outside. Obviously we might sort of overlap some and, and get them sort of looking a little bit sort of clustered together. But we wanna make sure we've got enough room. Okay, so we're gonna put in our open-faced focal flowers first and I am going to sort of dive in between using a size two brush, a size six, a size eight, because these flowers, well, they're gonna be a sort of a medium size, I guess, on this wreath. If we were doing a botanical painting, we might paint them a little bit larger. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by painting two petals in each flower coming out from the center. So we've done two sort of S-curve shapes. And I am going to add just a tiny bit more concentrated pink to the top. And they seem to have a bit more color at their ends rather than 
at their sort of central points. So we'll do the opposite side. So there's not a lot of paint on my brush, there is a bit of water. There we go, so it's this sort of loose, loose kind of heart shape. And what I'm doing by creating these shapes and adding in that little bit of more concentrated colour is I'm just sort of starting to hint at the detail they're going to do. Okay, so my next flower I'm going to pop in here. And just let that colour sort of run down. If your petal is wet enough, then you'll get a really nice blend down. Okay, so I'm now going to fill in all of these ones and then we'll come back for the second layer. We've got our first set of petals in, we've got a sort of series of propellers it looks like. And before we put in the second layer of the open face flower petals, I think it's a really good idea to have a think about if you're going to add in any kind of um, to the side angled flowers. And so what I'm going to do is just draw in a few little sort of open U shapes that's going to be the base of my flower. and. There we go. Might pop in one there. And I think we'll have one there as well. Again, we're still not worrying too much about the, uh, the branches, the stems. Um, I think I'll have one sort of closing in there. Lovely. And so for these ones, we're going to do the side petals. So, imagining, there we go, we're observing this flower from the side. And this time we'll just sort of give a little bit of a, a pink edge to the base. And then, you know, your flowers don't have to have the completely symmetrical petals. They might angle off in funny directions. And of course, if your flowers are close together that your petal might overlap whilst it's still wet, then just paint the one that isn't going to overlap. So at the moment, we're sort of filling in um, the basics of our jigsaw puzzle, I suppose with these petals that are all just about not touching each other. So I clean off my brush each time I've painted one of those uh, of the sort of wash and then I add the concentrated new colour with a clean brush just because the colours are slightly different. And this petal is going to be slightly more sort of three quarters so the, my petals are just a little bit more open. And I think I am going to just sort of bring this one and have it come so it just about touches. But we're gonna have fun and games with all the overlaps coming up. Okay, we'll let this dry and get on to the next section. Now I'm gonna go round and fill in the second layer of petals. And there won't be a huge amount of overlap on the previous layer. 
just because of the, the style of this flower, but there will probably be overlap with other flowers. And it's kind of down to you whether you sort of want to have them overlapping like that and it becomes quite a stylized piece because uh, these petals aren't actually sort of translucent as such, but this is just a style of painting that I really enjoy doing. Um, but you just have to sort of make sure whatever you're painting, if you're overlapping over anything else, it must have dried fully. And it's all looking quite sort of saccharine sweet at the moment. But as soon as we start to add in the sort of dark, intense of branches that go on a dogwood tree and also the centre of a dogwood flower is, is lovely and green and vibrant. So there's going to be a lovely contrast with all of this. But at the moment, yes, we're just in very very sweet pink territory. Okay so I'm going to just keep filling in all of the petals until we've got all our flowers filled in and we'll have a lovely abundant wreath. So I thought I'd invite you along for the last few um, bits. So for these side on flowers we're going to have a petal towards the back which will probably be higher up. And then there are some here, you can see one I've already painted higher up that's dried. Then we might add in one more as a sort of baseline flower. gaps as I go. I can still see a few unpainted petals. And it's very important to keep your paint really dilute because otherwise you will have nowhere to go in terms of building up layers with these flowers so just keep that in mind you can always add colour but it's much harder to take it away with watercolour. Okay one last bit of drying and then we are ready to add detail. After many layers and many uh, drying uh, sessions we now have our flowers all nicely done so we now are going to put in the branches so I'm going to create a really nice dark cold shadowy color um, which will beautifully convey the sort of rather dark wood branches of a dogwood tree so I'm just mixing up a, a shadowy mix get a little bit of burnt sienna in there just to warm it up a fraction because it makes it a little richer that colour and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to 
sort of map out my branches. And what's going to happen is there may well suddenly be an opportunity for a new um, flower or for a bud which or a little leaf that we're going to add in. And um, the other thing is we might sort of send our branches over the top of other flowers. So I am just going to sort of go for it and see what happens. So I'm going to begin with one of my side on. So when I'm painting a very dark branch or stem, a bit like with cherry blossoms, I like to sort of find tiny bits of unpainted space in there. So by painting it once and then going back over it again. And then they're quite sort of gnarly, knobbly little branches, so that's all quite good as well. So I'm now going to, yeah, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this branch from here and I'm going to create a little sort of extra budding branch off to the side, which will come here. So just using sort of the belly of the brush to create some interesting shapes. And then we're going to be adding some, uh, <clears throat> some green leaves shoots to that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this down over the front of that flower which means this one also gets added to the front, which feels quite like a brave thing to do. But just getting this sort of overlap and a sense of sort of entanglement, I suppose, is, is just kind of quite fun. And then looking for little spaces to add, just little extra bits of interest, I suppose. something off there. Now whilst we're at it I'm going to mix up some green as well and we want a sort of quite yellowy green, a fresh green, so either a bit of green gold um, mixed in with sap green or a little bit of green and yellow in your palette will give you a lovely fresh green like this. And I will just start with a few little C curves, which we will revisit with a little bit more detail in a bit. So I'm going to go around this whole wreath now by adding in these little bits. I'm using my size 2 brush to create these little leaves. And then I'm using my two tenths brush for the branches. Now I'm going to come up this way. I like to sort of keep coming back to that uh, pencil circle that we have drawn just because it helps keep the wreath sort of on the straight and narrow but it's all about having some fun with coming off and branching off a little bit. Try not to be too sort of stiff and rigid with your brushwork for the stem because there is a lovely wobbly wiggliness to the 
dogwood tree branches. And this green is just cutting through the saccharine sweetness of the pink so well. Now I'm coming down from the other side, meeting the branch there. I'm just going to turn the page around a little bit. Now we've got a, yeah, I'm going to have this flower on its side be in the foreground, but then we will have the sight of a branch that goes underneath there. So whilst it's not that I'm, I'm not sort of literally making it up as I go along, but I am just enjoying the sort of freedom of the possibility of, of what can come next. So I think we'll have this branch come over the top of that flower. And then that brings us kind of full circle. So we're just gonna add a few little leaves then let it dry and then we'll come back to add the centres of the flowers and some detail on the petals. So the first sort of bits of detail we're going to do are getting the little sort of delicate lines onto the petals. This could be a moment where you could sort of go too far. So the way I recommend doing it is starting at that end of the petal where it's folded over, put in a few little sort of pink uh, strips and then with a clean wet larger brush just draw that colour down in strands that little brush strokes that might sort of leave a faint little line and texture in itself um, but yeah, just don't go too far with it. So I've sort of started to add in a few lines over the around the place. And the other thing is you don't need to put them into every single petal if you don't want. Um, I think it's good to add a few To these side on ones here, they do help with the sort of direction of how the petal is folding out. But just keep sort of looking at the piece as a whole. Now the other thing in this early stage of detail is to look at adding a bit more darkness to the branches. So I've just got a really sort of nice sort of Payne's grey here, which is a sort of very bluey dark grey. So you could just make a really dark shadow colour maybe with some Mars black in it if you wanted. And I'm just adding, it's almost like low lights to the branches, just sort of knobbly bits of texture. Okay, so I'm going to add the detail to the petals and then we'll come back to put the centres in. So all our details done on the petals and this is also a great time to rub out whatever pencil is lurking there. And it's great because you just get to see there's a tiny bit sort of lurking so you've still got your, your guide for the centre of your flowers. Now, the centre of a dogwood has these amazing little sort of um, bobbly green clusters. 
So what I'm going to do is with a fairly sort of opaque concentrated green gold, so again either you can use sap green mixed with yellow, there it is in there, or yeah just sort of use a, a green gold, it's a colour that uh, not a huge amount of people would have in their palette anyway so you can always get a bit of yellow and green mixed together and if you are using cadmium yellow then it's a nice opaque uh, pigment anyway. And we're just going to paint in clusters. You might be able to hear my dog barking in the background, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's all excitement going on outside. So we're going to paint them like that for the uh, open face flower and for these ones there's going to be a variation of how much of the centre you can see but they're a little bit more like little sort of upside down teardrops so I'm just going to paint in a few and then we'll add to those once they've dried. I don't think we can see one at all in there. So yeah, we'll get those painted in and come back for the last bit of detail. Right then, the last little bits. I've mixed in a, a sort of Prussian blue in with my green to make a darker colour so that I can do some detail. First off, detail on some of these leaves just with my sort of small two tenths brush, a little line up from the sort of stalk and then just a few little extra bits and you can drop in a few sort of almost like sepals that have just poked out from under the flowers and then we'll also be using this colour to just add some detail to the centres of our flowers. So with the um, open face flowers we can just use this colour to add some sort of little low lights to our little balls in the middle. Or we can use them to add a second layer, a sort of foreground layer of the little teardrop shapes. on our side-on flowers. It's always these last little details that really bring it to life, in my opinion. This one's still a little bit wet, so we can't quite add to it just yet. I 
there we go. One flowering dogwood wreath in full blooming glory. Thanks so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.